people say music is one of the most beautiful language we speak, that it stimulates or relaxes their mind and how playing an instrument is the most liberating thing for them. But then... Why do I feel so bad about my music sometimes? I have experienced art block in the past and I'm pretty sure I will experience it in the future at some point. If you are watching this, you're probably an artist, a musician who struggles with it right now. So this is what we are going to talk about. I'm going to share some things I learned and I figured out about it, what I think about art blocks or burnout. And I will give you some actionable tips how you can deal with it. Now, first and foremost, I know this is stupid and it's very basic, but if you wake up and feel bad, try to leave the house and get some air and sunlight because it, be, it can be so recharging and refreshing. I'm not an outgoing person and this is the first time I left my apartment in the past five days, I think and it just feels amazing. So that's just why we are here and it's a little bit loud here and windy, so we are going to go now. You know, I've been playing classical guitar for nearly 20 years and I stream my practice sessions live on Twitch a couple of times a week, share my stuff on YouTube, I have an Instagram page where I post frequently. Basically, I show up on the internet every single day and sometimes, you know, just the pure love and passion for this instrument, it's just not enough. So I needed to come up with some tricks to to remind myself how much I love this and why exactly I'm doing this in the first place. I wanted to talk a little bit about consistency versus quality because I feel like consistency is like one of the most popular catchphrases in productivity nowadays. However, I feel like you know, the way it can work in practical fields might not be the best for us musicians and, and artists and creative people Maybe it's counterproductive. When I was at university, I was practicing four to six hours every day on my classical guitar, sometimes even longer. And uh, the rule of consistency suggests that I was supposed to be a very, very good musician, but I wasn't, and I was the most miserable I've ever been in my life. So what's up with consistency then, right? Um, so if you practice every single day, your skills, your technique will naturally improve, right? You will be able to play more and more difficult repertoire, but then you will need more and more time to practice daily. Your practice sessions are going to get longer naturally. And it can mean that other important things connected to music can fall behind like music theory, improvisation, and you know, improving your general understanding about music. These things can fall behind. So basically your skills improve, but the other fields or the other important aspects of music are not coming with it. So even if you practice your instrument every single day, but you don't spend time to improvise and to understand chord progressions or harmony or music theory in general, eventually you're going to hit a wall and you're not going to be able to improve your music from that point. At least this is what happened to me at university. So I was practicing longer and longer, but I didn't spend enough time to, to work on these other aspects of music. So that's about consistency in the first place. And uh, whenever I feel like I'm having an art block or I struggle with uh, my daily music, I naturally start to pull towards quality. And I only want to sit down to make music when I feel inspired, when I feel motivated, right? But uh, guess what? If I only sit down when I feel inspired, I will have these amazing ideas, but I will struggle with the execution because I won't have the required set of skills. My technique won't be good enough to make those wonderful ideas happen, right? So practicing a lot every day can damage our relationship to music, our creativity and enthusiasm, but playing only when we feel like will make us feel the technical limitations of our music. Okay, but then what am I supposed to do, right? Am I supposed to aim for quality or quantity? What am I supposed to do, right? <laughs> 
Well, these walks I take, I was talking about earlier, they force me to think about stuff and I figure something out that works for me well or helps me. Maybe I'm wrong. I can be wrong. I'm wrong all the time about a lot of things, but hear me out. We think about consistency and quality as two endpoints of a spectrum. You can be either consistent or you can be uh, making good quality stuff, right? What if there are actually two different axes running parallel with each other and on one spectrum we have very consistent and very inconsistent action on the endpoints and there's another spectrum where you have very good quality and very bad quality performance on the endpoints. And that would mean that you can produce very good quality stuff very consistently, but very inconsistently as well. So you can, you can do all kinds of variations. You can make bad quality stuff inconsistently or good quality stuff consistently and all the other variations as well. You know, a lot of people might think I'm not a good guitarist because I don't practice every day. I kind of stopped practicing daily somewhere after university and I felt really, really bad about it. But here's the thing, if you practice for others, for your parents, for your friends, for your teachers or for your community, you are practicing from fear. Fear from what people might think of you, what people will say about you, fear from falling behind, fear from uh, getting significantly better than you were last month, or fear from playing the wrong notes and fear from getting humiliated. What are wrong notes anyway? Do they exist at all? When we play classical music, we play someone else's composition, a predetermined set of notes, right? I always wanted to play as accurately as I can because I thought that's the most respectful, respectful way to play. And if I play wrong notes, I disrespect the composer. Playing these beautiful pieces by masters have taught me a lot about interpretation, style, characters, and technique, but at the same time following a piece of sheet music to tell me everything I should do and I should not do had negative effects on my music too. After playing for like 15 years, I felt like I'm in a, on a technical level where I can play anything I want to, but if I had to play something from the top of my head, I struggle. And if I try to compose something, I play three notes and my self-judging mechanism started on telling me, stop doing this stupid thing. There are beautiful pieces, amazing masterpieces you could dedicate your time to. They are already proven valuable. So stop bringing junk into the world. Why are you even trying? What are you doing there? Just stop. Ever since I started to pick up improvisation a couple of months ago, I started to feel more okay with my mistakes, even in classical pieces, because I know that I do everything I can to respect the composer and that making mistakes is human. The only question is what you do once you made a mistake. Are you going to get scared or are you going to lean into it? Mistakes are being made all the time, but the question is how you are going to react, what you are going to do about it. And once you learn to own your mistakes, you are going to be able to turn them on your advantage. For example, if you play a romance, Spanish romance, and there's this slide somewhere at the beginning, right? You want to jump up to the 12th thread, but let's say by accident you jump only to 11. And it sounds off, right? But you can make it right by just sliding a little bit up. So instead of getting scared, instead of getting shy about it, you can own your mistake and you can just move forward it, with it. You can just carry it. And you know, this is an approach I was able to develop only through improvisation. When I was playing classical music only, when I used to play uh, pieces written by other people, I wasn't able to think like this. I needed to do other things 
to get a wider perspective and to have this lighter approach. Okay, this all is very similar to what Kenny Werner is talking about in Effortless Mastery. And to just mention one quote I loved, he said, I realized that the goal is letting go of my ego and being kind to myself playing only what wants to come out effortlessly. And when he says ego, he means both the type which uh, glorifies themselves and the one that makes you suffocate in self-judgment. At this point, you're probably wondering if I'm ever going to make a point in this video, and for your sake, I really hope so. So what do I do with all this shit, right? Well, I clean up my room, I clean it up, I put on some lights, nice lights, not the upper one, nice ones, and I try to make the room as cozy and comfortable as possible. And I have that little practice corner over there. That's where I like to practice, but I only practice there. I have some paintings on the wall. It's very, it's very nice, it's very inspiring, but I only like to practice over there because in my head, that part of the room is connected for practice. And when I want to work on some compositions or um, improvisation, I put down this carpet here on the floor, I don't know why, and I bring some paper and pencil, like, you know, like, like old people, look at me. I have a mug, I bring some, you know, coffee, and then I have my guitar, right? I have the guitar too. And that's it, this is, uh, this place on the floor feels just so stress-free you know, and I just like to sit here. And this is my little dedicated place for improvisation and composing. No matter what I do, I try to chunk things up into manageable tasks or manageable goals. Like the other day, I had this really good experience. It was like two weeks ago and I woke up and I said, okay, today I'm going to write eight bars of music. That's it, not a song. If I said I'm gonna write a song today or something, a piece, I wouldn't even start it, but I said eight bars. Eight bars felt so manageable. And I quickly had the eight bars and I felt like, okay, I can, I can make it 16 bar and 32 bars. And then by the time I finished the 32 bars, it felt so complete and so, I don't know, so lovely. I liked how it sounded and it made me really happy. So I just put a short intro at the beginning and a short outro at the end. And there I was with a finished little prelude. It, it's not even a minute long, it's so short, but it's finished, it's done. You know, sometimes when I say, okay, I'm going to write eight bars, I only write eight bars and that's good. I said eight bars, I wrote eight bars, that's good. But it's more likely that I'm going to stick around longer and I'm going to finish 16 bars, 32 bars, or an entire short little prelude. Before we jump into conclusions, I just wanted to mention how I think this is a beautiful day to become a patron, right? Subscriptions start from $3 per month, you get voting power and access to my Patreon feed, you can get small package, big gift pack, monthly mentoring, all kinds of things, just head over to my Patreon page. And yeah, please consider supporting me so I can make more videos just like this one. And I just wanted to grab this opportunity to thank these awesome people for their support. They are amazing. Thank you guys, you're the best. So how to stay motivated and consistent and how to beat art block? Well, I have no idea. I really don't. I'm not practicing consistently and I'm quite demotivated sometimes. And I do struggle with art block sometimes as well. But here's the thing, practicing is not a goal. Practicing is a tool to make music. So basically what you want to do is to be consistent with music and you can have multiple ways to do that. Sometimes I feel like, okay, my practice session is not the thing that I want to push so hard today. Maybe I'm just going to sit down to improvise a little bit instead. Or if I feel really tired, exhausted, I'm just going to listen to a concert. I'm going to read a music related book or article or whatever. 
and maybe I don't feel like guitar is the instrument I want to pick up today. I'm going to go and have a look at the piano. Maybe I will start improvising on it a little bit. Doesn't matter. As long as I feel like I'm consistently doing some music every day, I feel all right. And the thing is, maybe on your technical level, you need more practice. To, to have good foundations. I'm already pretty happy with my technical skills, so this is why I allow myself uh, this free schedule. But you have to come up with your kind of consistency and what makes you able to maintain the technical skills you need to solve your musical idea. Practicing your repertoire four to six hours a day won't make you a good musician as long as you don't do other things. It will only make you burn out. It will make you hit a wall. For me, the hardest thing was to understand that even though I'm holding a guitar, if I ignore improvisation or music theory, I'm going to start from a lower level than what I am in, you know, at playing classical guitar. So I have to be very patient to myself. I'm not going to be as good of an improviser, as good as a classical music performer I am, right? Because I don't have the same experience. I didn't put the same amount of effort and time and, and everything into it. Even if I hold my guitar, as I do different things on it, I have to be patient to myself and I have to let go of my ego, of my self-judgment, and I just have to be very open and I have to listen to what's going on. So if you want me to give just one advice, I would say practice your instrument as often as you can, but don't ignore the other fields of music, the other aspects of music, because they are needed. You need them to be happy with your music. Learning from our mistakes feels great, right? It's awesome. But if you're wondering what mistakes I have made recently, I made this video about the lessons I've learned. Hopefully it's going to be helpful for you, so check it out. But if you would like to have a look at the artsy fartsy stuff I do, like my music and paintings and all kinds of stuff, here's a link to my shop, so check it out and maybe you will find something you like. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a bit. Bye.